Janice, could you just try to uh, share your audio and I will accept you as a moderator? Sorry, I was having some trouble with the <laughs> network here. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I think I like uh, our offices from your side. This you know, is much better than my side. With uh, the logo and everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, good day to everyone. Let's just uh, give uh, people some time to join. Yeah, more, like roughly four more minutes, let's see. So what do you think of the conference so far? <clears throat> it's been a blast. <laughs> it's been, uh, <laughs> especially um, working around the clock to support both people from EU and from Pacific Time. Uh, has been quite uh, quite a nice uh, experience, let me say. Uh, a lot of interesting things, of course. Uh, a lot of interesting sessions, and I'm really glad that uh, the sessions will be available after the after the conference because I don't think we're gonna have time to watch everything everything that's left yeah. uh, today. It was actually quite uh, quite uh, like a lot of stuff happening in a very short time, so it was like pretty packed, let's say. Yes, and I guess that you know, for most people, uh, the whole uh, platform and online conference experience might be the first time they join, and it's kind of hard to uh, to go around the first two days. There was so much happening. <clears throat> that is right. That is right. Great. Uh, I'm just uh, checking the chat. One more minute, and we can start uh, start the whole mm -hmm. session. So, where are you located? Where is this uh, background from? <laughs> uh, so, where these are like from our offices in Ciro's. No, just like joking. <laughs> California branch. <laughs> it's a California branch. Yeah. <laughs> So we Great. should also like announce the the, the events in the yes, channel. Yes, I think there was an announcement from. Uh, can you please uh, take care of that because uh, I missed the link right now. Uh, I think there was an announcement from the things conference, and you can just post one more, and then we can start. Mm -hmm. Great. I think uh, I think we we are good to go. This is a recorded sessions, and I guess uh, there are going, it's going to be people watching this uh, later. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like you to just you know uh, pull the any um, much uh, screen of the of the uh, of the platform on the background, so that sure. you know people have some uh, some reference. Mm -hmm. So can you both have the oh Let so me. it's uh, it's on top of our new offices, right? <laughs> of course, yeah. Let me <laughs> let me open Great. the website for you. <clears throat> so, welcome to our session. Uh, we're gonna go around uh, the Kudzu Analytics platform, and we're gonna do this uh, in order to show you all the details about how you can actually use this type of analytics in order in order to provide uh, to get better insights of your network and how your network really performs. Uh, we have uh, good faith in Kudzu technologies that this is uh, information like the one you're going to see. It's, it's going to be a very valuable asset for your network, for both network operators and uh, solution users. Uh, I will go very briefly in this uh, introduction before Yanis takes the lead. Uh, long story short, what we've seen in uh, LoRaWAN deployments is actually mainly two types of networks around. There are commercial uh, network operators. Uh, which uh, deploy their gateways and then they monetize on top of this by selling access to the network. And there are also a big part of people, a big amount of people who are actually solution uh, users. And these users usually have to install their own gateways and uh, their own small network in order uh, to make their solution uh, work. Now, uh, we see both cases as one. For us, both of these type of uh, deployments are actually big or small network operators. And we feel like they are, uh, both of these uh, cases have more or less the same problems when it comes to how they're gonna deploy their network and how they're gonna monitor the network beyond just monitoring the gateways and their functionality. Uh, 
so we started an, an attempt in good technologies to uh, organize, to, to grab all the metadata of the gateways that your network, uh, oh, from the gateways uh, of your network, uh, and organize them this time on a network level. Uh, and from this metadata, once you, you once you organize them in a network level, you can immediately start seeing uh, your network as a whole and uh, the operation of your network as a whole. Uh, so from actually day one, you can start seeing whether your infrastructure is actually uh, performing the way you expect it to be and the way your customers really want it to be. Uh, so with this sort of introduction, I will just uh, leave the microphone to Yanis because he has all these nice fancy graphics behind his back. <laughs> and I think he can uh, help you visualize what we are talking about. Yanis. Definitely. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through a bit um, in our platform. So I'm just going to show you how you can become, uh, how you can maximize your network potential as a network operator. Um, so uh, I'm going to go through all the various uh, things that we have um, uh, we have in the platform and how you can use them uh, to maximize your efficiency. So I'm going to start. Uh, I'm just going to start first briefly explaining what this platform is and what actually you can do. So um, the idea is that uh, there are a lot of metadata uh, that are not being used lately uh, by by the old recent platforms we've seen. So. Uh, what we're doing is we're sitting between um, the gateway and your network server, and we're collecting analytics metadata. Uh, so um, we're using this kind of information to uh, analyze the status of uh, the radio, uh, and then um, without touching your application solely by the uh, payloads we have on the air, we can come up on some decisions on what you have. Um, let's see, for example, uh, behind the scenes what I have right now, which is uh, the network, um, like a few charts from our system. Uh, here on the left, we see the signal strength distribution, uh, signal noise distribution, all this kind of information, as I told you, are collected purely uh, from our um, uh, analytics uh, middleware. <coughs> um, so uh, let's start in investigating a bit. Uh, all right, so let's start investigating the signal strength. First of all, um, what, what can we see from this kind of plot? So um, imagine the following situation. So um, we you see, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, one second. All right, sorry, uh, I'm back. There was like some interruption from my side. <laughs> Excuse the delay. Uh, all right, so and signals. <laughs> sorry, Dimitris, go ahead. No, no, it's fine. I was just uh, wondering if you're having some uh, technical issues. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just like dropped some parts, like so the charger. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm back. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's start with the signal distribution. So um, usually the signal distribution uh, is bound uh, to the receiving side. So this is like here, the signal strength uh, of your device. Um, uh, so. Um, one sec. Um, Sorry, Dimitris. Uh... All right, sorry, I'm back. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's start. With, let's start with with a, with a very uh, very busy. Uh, let's start with the very basic stuff. Uh, actually, let me first walk you through the whole platform, and then I'm gonna go back and see the details. And um, so we see uh, signal strength, uh, band usage, channel utilization. Um, uh, payload payload size, uplink payload, downlink payload size, uh, channel saturation. All this kind of information are collected purely based on the data we have on the radio uh, level. And so the plan for this workshop is to actually try and help you, let, let, let you guide, uh, help you uh, using this platform to find out what's really wrong in the system uh, in your particular network installation. So we're taking the example here of Cirrus network. So Cirrus, uh, we have developed, um, like we're also, as could we're maintaining a network, like a small network in Cirrus. Uh, like uh, this is the things network um, we have for Cirrus, and we have uh, linked our platform with the system. Using this, we can find out the quality of that network with just like a few charts and a few metrics. And, and my plan was to walk you through and show you how uh, you can do the same thing in your own network and how you can read this kind of metrics uh, to come up in some kind of uh, decisions. Um, 
Starting from, from starting from this chart, okay, let's let's take this together. Let's make this a bit more interactive. Um, we're here in the point of uh, we see this uh, kind of uh, signal strength distribution. So what we can see. So the images, what can you see like in this kind of chart? So okay, what are so, like, the main um, highlights you take? Yes, I will just uh, go through the uh, through the graphs, and you can follow just you know scrolling down. Uh, so what we started with, it's uh, the main basic stuff that everybody can usually see on their own gateways, especially if you buy some kind of commercial gateway there. So you can see actually uh, what's the distribution of your RSSI. This is the RSSI of the whole of the messages received uh, on the whole of your network, actually, not just one gateway. And on the left side and on the right side, you can see how the signal operation, uh, the, uh, the signal noise distribution is actually distributed throughout the whole of your network. So uh, on the one side, you can see how your uh, how your uh, devices are actually how, how devices on your network are actually being received by the network, and on the right side, you can actually see what's going on on the uh, gateway level on the gateway position. And if you can just scroll a little bit, Yanis. Uh, sure. And moving on, you can uh, start seeing uh, information about how your uh, devices are actually utilizing uh, the network itself. Uh, you can see the band usage and channel utilization. And this is actually where uh, very briefly you can start seeing, uh, for those of you who know exactly how uh, how the LoRaWAN protocol works, you can already see uh, problems appearing. And um, for example, here you can see that in this uh, test network we have deployed in the island of Syros, uh, there's a very huge, uh, very large utilization of the first three channels. Now, this is something that uh, you can, yep. Let, 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 let me interrupt you and let, let's take things like uh, one after the time. So let's, let's try to focus on one thing. So uh, let's let's take, for example, for, for a while in the, the single string distribution, try to find out what we really see out of this kind of plot. Let's, let's, say, let's try to structure it like this. So uh, by checking the signal strength distribution, you can find out that the network, uh, like the, the signal strength is towards the left side, which is the higher uh, decibel side, right? So this means that our network is quite far from the devices. So let's say, for example, you have a, a gateway installed like here. Uh, it seems like since your SSR is quite far, your devices are located somewhere like here, like far away from your uh, from your gateway. Uh, this means that perhaps we should go back and try uh, to um, uh, uh, to find out exactly uh, how can we fix this kind of situation. So you see that you have this uh, kind of uh, distribution. Um, now, what can we say out of this? So what we can do, let's say we have a gateway here. So how would you fix this? How would you do this kind of thing? Like if, if your device mm -hmm. are located here mm -hmm. and if you're gonna just put another gateway, actually, let's, let's go with the image. So where would you put another gateway if this kind of situation is happening? So let's well, say usually, that we have- uh, Usually the first reaction that people have in such type of problems, like seeing this distribution of RSSI is uh, throwing another gateway on the other side of the city. Uh, and by doing this, you actually, uh, you think that you have started seeing better, uh, you have a much better coverage, but actually the issue is more or less, uh, again, the same. Uh, the gateway on the left is gonna be receiving some devices with a good RSSI, while uh, other devices are gonna be uh, received with bad RSSI, but the exact same scenario happens for the second gateway also. So in the end, what you see on your distribution, on your RSSI distribution, there's no change. So you haven't really fixed any of those issues. And the question is, uh, how can you actually have a little bit more uh, insights on this type of data that will help you to decide exactly which position of, uh, of the new gateway will solve this type of problem? Mm -hmm, exactly. So for which kind of things, uh, this platform can become really helpful. So by going, for example, in the big picture, and you can investigate the coverage you have right now, you can go ahead and find out like your possible blind spots, like this one's here, this one's here, this one's here. Or you can even go ahead and perform like a, an analysis over the reach over your network. And, um, and uh, here, for example, you can see that this is the reach of your gateways, this is the reach of your gateways, and then you know that you can put another gateway in this area, for example, uh, because uh, the line of sight, like because they're like under the other lights. So here, what we see, the blue area is the coverage of your gateway, and then red area is the potential, like it's the the site you can still have line of sight, but you don't have anyone connected in that particular thing. 
like this is like something you can very quickly see out of a, of a single uh, like a single strength distribution plot uh, and how you can visualize the data on the map. Uh, let's let's move, for example, or like on the next part, and let's try to see the next plot here. So on the right, we have the signal strength, like the signal noise distribution. So what do you say, Dimitri? So what, what someone can see, like by seeing this kind of a plot, like what kind of information do you think we collect? Well, we can see that uh, we have a lot of messages coming with spreading factor 12, which uh, in general, uh, if, there are, if there are devices with ADR enabled on your, uh, on your network, these have probably slowly moved to spreading factor 12 in, all, in order to be received in much better uh, condition. Uh, however, uh, when you are looking just the signal noise distribution, then this is uh, a, an indicator of your gateways being on a noisy environment. And we will uh, try later to show you how you can actually map this on, on the map, on the real map, uh, combined with your graphical data and see how you can actually just by uh, re redesigning your, uh, your deployment, you can actually uh, throw back all these uh, messages uh, to spreading factor seven and have a much better uh, distribution. Sure. Um, that, that's actually, you said something like very interesting. So you said that like this has nothing to do really with the receiver. It actually has to do with the location of the gateway. So this is like a really helpful, this is a really useful information. So. Um, currently, uh, you can analyze uh, all this kind of information in a map using our platform. So you can go ahead and see that uh, these particular uh, devices, these particular gateways are located in a noisy environment. Uh, so for example, you need to move it a bit in a, in a different, uh, in a different uh, like location. Um, let's, go, let's go, for example, let's go to the next. Uh, let's, oh, wait, wait, sorry, <clears throat> my screen, so here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to see like another particular problem we see uh, quite frequently in uh, this kind of scenario. So, um, quite, uh, if you yeah, want, I, uh, can, uh, I can go around this uh, since uh, since actually I have caused this problem to the network by <laughs> testing more and more devices there. Uh, okay, this uh, uh, this is one uh, common thing that we've seen a lot of times uh, in networks where we were called to see uh, issues and see what's going on. Uh, so most of you, you probably know that every, even LoRa one certified devices, they come uh, with uh, the three uh, the three first channels as a pre-configured uh, channel map. The rest of the channels are uh, up to the user to actually configure uh, the channel map so that the device can use it. So it's a very common scenario uh, for people who buy, uh, you know, off the shelf LoRa one devices. Uh, to just use them without configuring the rest of the channels. I'm pretty sure most of you uh, here have uh, used such uh, type of devices, and I'm pretty sure that especially during develop development cycles, people just don't even configure the rest of the channels. So what we see here is uh, a deployment gone wrong. Uh, you might have used the correct gateways, you might have placed uh, the gateways correctly, but uh, if, you are, uh, if you are an operator of the network, then uh, your customers are not using your network correctly. If you are a solution user, then you should make sure uh, to go back and check your devices again. Uh, what we see here, so is uh, that these devices are only, there are a lot of messages only being transmitted on the first three channels, which will much quicker uh, lead to uh, network saturation, although the rest of the channels are still free. <clears throat> By using the platform, platform, you can also see under the graph that you're actually getting this type of warnings very, uh, very easily and very lightly explained. So you can have a very good idea about what's going on there. That's actually a really good point. So I'm going to just demonstrate this feature before I continue further. Uh, as Dimitris pointed out, um, this kind of analysis we're doing right now, we're, we're trying to just like explain to you how this matrix can be read and how it can be interpreted by someone. But of course, most of these things are also being processed by the platform for you. So uh, I just wanted in the workshop just like walk you through the, the chart, but actually that's a really good point, uh, Dimitris. Let's also uh, in, in for like present this particular feature. And of course, this information are useful to engineers, to data scientists, but people with like um, in executive positions don't really care about that. They just want to see if the network is good or bad. You can do this with a single click if you just go to the report page. Into this report page, our analytics platform will go ahead and analyze the data that you have in the given like time range. And we'll try to come up with like a high level summary information of what's going on in your system. 
So this will go and process like the charts as you would normally, as a human would do, for example, and then try to extract useful information from each one of them and present this kind of issues to, uh, like, to the possible users. And this is how you can quickly find out what is going wrong on your system and where you should focus. And as a matter of fact, the system goes one step further and goes ahead and, and explains you how the system could, could be caused and what could be fixing this. So, for example, as Dimitri said, uh, when somebody is using channels one, two, three, this usually means that the LoRa one stack is misconfigured, is wrongly implemented, or your devices are misconfigured not to use the, the respective channel list. Um, so, of course, if you're, if as a network operator, you're not possible to fix that, your next best choice would be to add more gateways to avoid saturating uh, like the um, uh, the areas around them. But that should always be your last resort. You should not do this for the very first time, right? And it's, uh, um, sorry to interrupt, it's also pretty mm -hmm. common that uh, when you have large projects in your network, usually network operators have some kind of contact point with uh, whoever is using this type of devices. So there is also some type of strategy there that you can actually, using such type of analytics data, you can actually suggest to your customers uh, do the changes that will make their solution work much better before going on and just you know adding gateways around the town. Exactly. That's a really good point. Um, okay, let's go back a bit to the charts and let's continue from the point we left. Um, so oh, it's here. Uh, so we're seeing, uh, we saw this kind of chart. We saw these things that like the images point out, the channel utilization. Um, by the way, um, we're really going forward to some like feature we're going to announce perhaps later, uh, like in this presentation. And this channel utilization is... Um, something that could be solved with ADR, but that could be also solved with other kind of solutions. So we're going to show you uh, our way of solving this particular problem uh, later in the presentation. Um, so let's continue. Uh, we have also um, uh, payload sizes, uh, downlink payload sizes. Um, actually, <laughs> trying to make this presentation like a bit more interactive. Can you imagine <laughs> what could go wrong if you have um, packets being sent on spreading factor 11 or spreading factor 12? Uh, and have ADR enabled, which means that they ended up on this. Uh, uh, okay, no, let's let's try the other way around. Let's say that you have some devices uh, which have uh, which are currently transmitting on spreading factor seven, and they are sending about one hundred bytes of data, and they have ADR enabled. So what could go wrong? Like, uh, I'm gonna ask the audience, but like Dimitris <laughs> is the only one available, so. <laughs> I'm just going to ask Dimitri. So, what could go wrong in this kind of well, scenario? Well, uh, we've seen these uh, scenarios. They're not well. We've seen these scenarios pretty often in the in the field, especially with devices that come from the uh, from the times and from the from other type of technologies. Uh, there are the, there are devices that actually uh, use way more or actually move on the on the edge of the of the data that you can transfer, Laura. And you can, of course, send quite a lot of bytes if you are in uh, if you are in different spreading factors. But once your once your spreading factor moves towards twelve, you have less and less data to transfer. And if you have devices like which sit right there on the middle of uh, on the end uh, of the on the edge of the possible uh, data uplink, uh, then we know that if this device moves to higher spreading factors, it's going to be if not problematic, or if not, let's say, unable to send the data on the edge of 50 bytes, uh, at least it's going to be using way too much of your airtime. And this is usually a good indication and of uh, users in your net network uh, <clears throat> using devices that are, let's say, dangerous uh, for your network. It could be a very good, uh, one good strategy would be to inform your users again that, you know, uh, if your devices are, uh, are going to use ADR, then you're going to, sooner or later, you're going to have a problem with that because there won't, there won't be any. Uh, yeah, there is like, the way, the way it was going there is like, of course, uh, like as the ADR suggests, like a bigger and bigger uh, spreading factors to reach you because you were like a mobile device or if your gateway went down. Uh, you're actually going to start losing your messages because if your application is not aware from the fact that like uh, the, the packet size is limited to the size of the payload, um, this can actually cause that packet to be silently dropped. So you will not be able to transmit that message with higher spreading factors and you're eventually going to lose that message. So as you said, we have seen that happening before. So that's why we're also uh, notifying people uh, that having a spreading factor, uh, like a big spreading factor configured uh, and the devices are sending uh, quite big amount of data. Uh, so, for example, like this is like someone sending in, in like a hundred of like a hundred ten bytes, and they're uh, having a pretty bad reception. So, uh, like that that happened by accident, I'm assuming here. So, someone really far away with 150 decibels managed to send something, 
but they have ADR enabled, which means they will eventually kind of like move them outside yeah. of that range. Um, okay, so let's continue a bit like browsing the plots and let's see what else uh, can we have here. Um, the other kind of useful information we're collecting here is the um, uh, channel saturation. So the channel saturation is computed uh, by calculating how much time on air are you spending with a frame of a day. So like how long, how, how, how full is your band? And you will notice that this is not totally in correlation with this plot here. So channel utilization counts how many packets you have sent in this particular channel, uh, while um, channel saturation is also computing the overall time on air, which means includes the spreading factor and the size of your packets. So uh, this is like the overall aggregated saturation of your channel. So the bigger the saturation, the more possible you're going to uh, like lose data in this particular region, uh, this particular band. Um, so, uh, how could you someone how could, how could someone mitigate this particular problem? Like the solution would be to isolate on the map the particular problematic area, so you know if you should add more gateways in this particular case, because the busier your the area it is, you, you will need more gateways to be able to compensate the chances of you actually picking a correct message out of this area. You're not going to solve that problem, so the problem still needs some kind of proper solution. Uh, but um, at least you're going to mitigate your problem as a network operator because our whole goal using this analytics platform is to try to maximize uh, the performance, like the quality of the network that you're delivering to your end customers. That's like and, the basic idea. And also, if you allow me, uh, there's a, a little bit more information about it because uh, by using this type of plat platforms, you can know where this problem comes from and where you can invest on this. This is correct. This is correct. So uh, currently, uh, we have a couple of uh, like spatial. So that okay, you're, you're jumping like a bit forward, a bit backwards. But let let's let's try to clarify this kind of thing. So uh, the platform is putting the data also spatially. I was planning to show this a bit later, but like we can even jump right now. So um, the platform is collecting a position. This kind of information uh, also on a map. So it tries to position your devices using reverse like triangulation. So it's basing on the signal strength and the position of your gateways. It can try to position your device on the map. I can actually quickly jump and show you some kind of data we've collected. So if you see the the geospatial data here. Um, this is this is a combination of two different uh, like data uh, sources, and um, as I told you in the beginning, our platform is is uh, coming between your uh, gateways and your application server. It's not on the application layer, so it doesn't know anything about your actual application. It's operating solely on the gateway level, which means that we don't have access to your actual uh, payload data. So if you have like a locatable device, we don't know exactly this information, but you can overlay them if you would like to. So this is a combination of two things. So we have a few data points down here, which are uh, geoposition based on the reverse geolocation logic from the gateways. So the gateways can find and triangulate your data points. And these data points here come from an actual GPS module that was like um, used uh, in this particular area. And as uh, the minute is told you, we can actually position this information we saw on the map. And this is like a, like a, like a grouping operation, uh, like in cells on the map. Uh, where you can actually see uh, the areas which have like a like good RSSI, bad RSSI, but not only RSSI, all these kind of metrics you see on the plot can be placed on a map. So, for example, by checking the uh, the uh, saturation uh, situation here, da like down here, you can do the same thing and put it on a map. So you can actually show me how saturated are my areas. So you know in advance which areas you should invest in order to be able to cover all the problematic areas on your particular network. Um, yeah, so like, thanks for bringing this up. Uh, like, early in <laughs> well, discussion. if you think that uh, you know, I'm moving you forward with my comments, just mute me. You know, just uh, don't don't care about that. <laughs> no, no, no. We're we're civilized here. We're just, we we let all the opinions uh, <laughs> be on, on the air. Um, this is like another kind of interesting plot. So uh, this plot here classifies uh, your applic messages based on the flags we had on the uh, on the Mac header. So we can classify as uh, like over the air, uh, like uh, OTAA activations, uh, unconfirmed and confirmed. So confirmed means that you have like you have the require uh, like an, a confirmation packet to come from the other side. And we had the need to add this particular plot because in our network um, we saw a couple of uh, a couple of devices that were requesting an acknowledgement all the time, even though they shouldn't do this, and that caused some gateways. Uh, to reach, like to get close into saturating the, the downlink channel because they were abusing uh, this kind of, of logic. Because 
like that that's quite something that's quite something famous we see so when you move from the tcp world and then to the connected connection to uh, lora people just like try to think oh i need my reliability and all these kind of things and then they try to require the maximum possible things uh, like from their uh, from their system so they actually went and enable uh, a, a like a, a, a acknowledgement in all the packets and then of course when you have a couple of hundred of these devices requesting like a confirm downlink without the enough gateway infrastructure in your area, you're actually saturating your gateways and causing this uh, like this kind of trouble. So this particular plot can help you find out what percentage of your uh, messages is actually confirmed. And you can then group it into a gateway view so you know which gateways are the ones which are overloaded with this kind of information. In this particular case, we see after like a, like a few months, uh, like the whole thing has resolved itself. So we just have only unconfirmed messages, which is the correct way of, of doing this. Um, going further, uh, we have some kind of like high level charts, some high level plots that somebody can use, uh, like we can see with uh, like a single view, uh, what's really going wrong on your network. So we, we said, we saw before, uh, we said before a few, uh, metrics like the saturation, like the, um, uh, the channel usage, and that might be useful uh, if you want them just like to go and analyze the data, but it's pretty useful also to have a big picture they like view and see like give me exactly what's really happening what's really the situation there so they can quickly just show you all this kind of information in a quick dial so in this case uh, 0 0.28 percent of your uh, whole channels are saturated which means you're, you're perfectly fine you're like all your network is available all the data are available so you can really do whatever you like but 50 percent of your devices are not using the channels evenly which means that 50% of your devices are wrongly implementing the LoRa one stack. So you need to go ahead and investigate as a proper network operator. Um, let's go a bit further and check the infrastructure load. These are like other kind of metrics you can see. Again, these are all data coming from a gateway without knowing anything about your application layer, just from the gateway to our servers, uh, like to like uh, directly to your, uh, to your application server without having to go attach the application. So we can see here the uh, uplink rate of your application. So we can see exactly um, what's happening on your, uh, like how stressed your gateways are effectively and how good or bad like is a CRC you're receiving. Um, the, the downlink rate is also very useful um, combined with what I said before. So we, we had cases we had this kind of acknowledgement enabled or like too many downlinks enabled. You can use this downlink plot to find out which gateways are most, uh, most loaded. Uh, as, as we said before, keep in mind that gateways can only use one channel for downlink, which means this, this channel is very, um, it's highly probable to saturate it like much faster than you would normally do all the different bands that the devices can use for uplinks. Uh, so this is a very interesting, it's a very important metric that you should pay attention to. And you can even visualize this kind of data into a, into a, like a map view. What's going to go a bit later. Um, Let's continue a bit further. Uh, we also have, uh, oh yeah, that's also quite an interesting thing. Like another problem we faced uh, in our uh, like uh, network installations is that um, we we saw people going and installing their devices and they were installing them within a few hours or like within like close the hour. So when they were activating them, they were causing this kind of bursts on the messages because they start counting from this point and they were not doing any kind of randomization on the time they were like uploading data. So this ended up into having like this kind of super hot days. Of course, as a network operator, this is quite problematic from your from your perspective. Of course, not going to do any kind of damage, but you're reducing uh, your like at this this time of the day, you're actually increasing the chance of losing packets. So that's something you normally don't want. You want to spread this throughout uh, throughout the time. Um, using our diagnostic view, you can actually go ahead and figure out which devices are sending this kind of information and where they are located. Uh, Dimitri, do you want to say something? Hey, I can say so many things <laughs> regarding <laughs> this, uh, mainly because it's uh, one of the most common uh, problems we've seen in deployments where we just jumped in to see what's, what was going on. Uh, especially when it comes to um, monitoring infrastructure and city infrastructure and, uh, and talking about devices that are not, uh, are not transmitting based on events, but they are transmitting regularly through the day. Uh, some of these devices have some type of a small randomization of the time they're going to send, but it's quite often that we see, for example, we have seen like a thousand water meters waking up at 12 a.m. and sending their message. Uh, in small networks, this can be okay, this can be handled, uh, but it's uh, we think that 
Uh, adding more gateways to solve such type of problems should not be should actually be your last frontier, your last choice. Uh, if you have this information on the platform, then you can usually come to contact with uh, with your customers or with your solution provider and uh, uh, just change the configuration of your devices. We've seen many times that people opt in uh, the choice of just adding more gateways, which adds more infrastructure actually without the need for yes yeah, keep in mind like adding more gateways also costs more like so that's not really the thing you would like to do you just want to make sure your application and there's is a lot fine and there's your... a lot of, especially when you're in production there's a lot more cost than just the cost of the gateway there is a uh, second day operations servicing probably you need to hire some place in order to put your antenna and uh, quite probably you exactly. need to hire somebody to go there and install your antenna that's correct uh, let's go a bit further because I think we're like close to a half an hour limit. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see. So um, uh, let me just like open my like the, de the debug view to show some kind of error in this particular uh, scenario. So um, let me tell you the following scenario here. So let's say that you have a network and uh, let's say you have your three gateways like in some kind of area. And in these three gateways, uh, you're having like 100 devices overall spread on your entire network here. Um, and as a network operator, your goal is to maximize the coverage. So you want to have uh, as many gateways as possible seeing like at least one device. We, because if you lose one gateway, you don't want to lose a big fragment, a big section of your network. So what happens if you just have like a 10% of the network uh, seen by only one gateway and that gateway goes away? Then you're going to immediately lose that particular 10% of your network. This automatically makes this particular gateway a critical gateway because if you lose this gateway, you're going to lose a percentage of your network. So this is exactly what this plot is showing you here. So it tells you that there are gateways in your system uh, that are being critical. And this is like the overall criticality of your system, which means that if, an if anything goes wrong in your system, this is the amount of gate, uh, this is the amount of device you're going to lose. So like the if the network goes down, like if like the, if the worst case scenario happens tomorrow, this is like the amount of device you're gonna lose. So you need to be aware of this metric and try to find out how you can increase the coverage of your gateways. And actually just to, uh, just, just, right to just to give some backstory of this, this was one of the first very nice insights we had when we started even you know thinking about this type of platform and doing the first tests. Uh, what we saw in the network that we were we were deploying was that there was a specific application uh, using a small number of uh, of sensors, which was which sensors were only and those sensors were only received by one of the gateways we had in town. The town was in general very well covered, but the devices were in such positions that they were actually being received by only one of the gateways, and that this directly gave us the idea that you know if. If we lose one gateway, and uh, by lose it might mean you have a problem on the back end, you might have a physical problem, yeah, you yeah, might have right. a lightning strike and striking or whatever, then the whole application was uh, so dependent on this gateway that uh, the customer would not uh, receive any kind of data. That's very serious. That's really serious. Uh, yeah, that's exactly like the like all this kind of. Th by the way, all this kind of charts you see before comes from real problems we faced as network operators. So we want to solve this kind of things. We're going to solve this kind of problems, and we come up with some solution that helps us solve this. And we're hoping it can help you also solve this kind of problems yourself. Um, let's go a bit further. Uh, Another interesting metric we can we can collect is by analyzing the time on air of all the packets, how frequently they're transmitting. We can compute uh, the average duty cycle of these devices. So we can find out uh, what's the average duty cycle uh, used in every one of these, uh, like in in every channel, because there is a duty cycle per channel. Uh, so we see here there's a particular device totally abusing this particular rule. So it's not abiding abiding to the LoRa one rules. It's not like uh, complying with the uh, channel regulations on this particular channel, uh, and it's actually critical. So this is a good indication that you know this is something wrong that you should have, you should pay attention because the duty cycles in these devices are not properly um, followed by. Of course, again, this, the solution you can have in this case is to find out exactly your device. Uh, you can open the diagnostic view to find out your device and your gateways on the map, and then try to mitigate the problem you have. Um, going a bit further, we also have other kind of metrics like uh, the things network fair access policy that like we can also validate against that. And um, this is like in uh, so as as Demetrius uh, said in the beginning, we're also supporting a couple of uh, TTN community um, uh, communities in Greece. So we have uh, the Thessaloniki TTN community and the Syros TTN community is backed by the system. 
uh, it's given for for free in, in like in this kind of communities for like pilot testing and um, this is like a useful indication we can have so we can classify the quality of this uh, TTA network so we can say that hey this is a good quality network and people are like abiding like abiding by the rules and those kind of things and we see here for example that some guys are not really following that rule so we are like That's abusing me. this uh, <laughs> 30 seconds per day <laughs> violation, like a uh, rule. Like some of them are really, really doing a bad job here. And you can find them down and you just like uh, hand them a call. And by the way, it's something important to clarify here is that all this information are available over an API. So which means that your analytics server, uh, your gateway, your device can always query for this kind of information, and take decisions on their own. So they can actually ask us, uh, hey, what's the situation in this area? What's the situation in the other area? How, like, which people are like abusing the network? What can we do? And it automatically, uh, like, it gives you like an API-friendly response, so you can use them to take your own actions. Um, yeah, and coming back, to, like, coming to the final part is like the the beta feature we discussed, that which is the uh, geoposition information. Uh, as I told you, uh, like before, uh, what was that? So. Uh, this is like the, the geospatial analysis of so putting the devices on the map. And um, as I told you, we're using triangulation based on pure uh, like uh, LoRa radio uh, characteristics. And we have like here a list of devices that can be like uh, positioned accordingly. And uh, yeah, and I'm just going to now jump into our latest and greatest <laughs> feature. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, as we, as we discussed before, we want to be able to uh, monitor um, the infrastructure uh, and we want to plan ahead uh, possible investments in the network. Uh, to be able to achieve this, you need to know exactly what is happening on your network. Uh, in this kind of view, we're performing a line of sight analysis over a map and then we're using all this, uh, we're using only the, the Fresnel zone um, obstruction rules. We're taking everything we can to ensure that you have like the best view on what kind of coverage your network has. Uh, so, for example, here the light green area shows you uh, areas with a, a really good strength, a really good signal strength, and no obstructions to the Fresnel zone, which means that the, for sure these areas will have coverage on your devices. Um, uh, the darker green one shows you that uh, there is a partial obstruction uh, up to 40% to the first Fresnel zone, which means that you have some kind of like uh, noise coming here. And then, of course, um, uh, the darker green areas, which we don't see here, but we will see if I zoom out is um, areas outside of the uh, 120 decibel limit, which means that you're now reaching the limits of the possible, like of lower transmissions. It doesn't mean that it's impossible to receive something, but you have like a lower chances there. And your still line of sight is unaffected, which means that you can, you can potentially touch these devices and see these devices if you have like a better antenna. Like for example, uh, I'm not sure if I can, if I can zoom out, out enough. Uh, we managed to receive a packet here in Ciros <laughs> which was sent uh, from Crete, which is down here. I think that's about so, uh, 240 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, that was like a pretty, a pretty amazing thing. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you have a line of sight. So we confirm that like through the system that there is a line of sight, but of course, like more than 150 decibels. So it doesn't really make sense to uh, like to have this like that. It's not like efficient to have it, but it's here. So if we just like zoom down here, you see that like these areas are actually accessible. So the, the network can actually see even it's like, yeah. it's 200 kilometers away yeah, with, with a better antenna or like with a, with a more like a directional antenna, you can definitely uh, get this kind of information. So let me refresh to get back into where we started. And um, now the view we saw before, it is just uh, based purely on um, uh, landscape information. We haven't overlaid any kind of information of the network so far. Uh, you can enable this kind of information by enabling the reach map. So the reach map is actually showing you uh, how, how, like, what is the radius of devices your device has contacted? So how far, like, what device have you seen, like, from this point of view? And how much is actually unutilized from your gateway? Um, using this kind of system, you can see that, like, uh, this particular gateway, for example, has seen devices in this area, so up to Hermopoli, like, in the, like, the center of the city but hasn't really reached its potential uh, throughout this particular zone. So you, it can see further, but we haven't really used any, any information from that point. Mm -hmm. Like using this kind of information, uh, like the base landscape map plus overlaid information from the analytics system, you can get the best decisions into your planning for your next network deployment. So we can use this kind of information for doing the most accurate uh, like um, deployments as a network operator. So the bottom line is that uh, using our system, uh, it is really possible for a network operator with a few clicks and with like a big overview 
to have uh, like need to use uh, access uh, to all the possible analytics that is useful for him uh, to maximize the potential of your network. So to find out where your problems are, how to solve your problems, how to fix like the, the application errors or the hardware errors you have just encountered, to be able to maximize your uh, like your reach and the quality you're delivering to your custom. Um, one final feature, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how you can integrate or what kind of integrations we have uh, currently with the system. Um, so uh, go to analytics. Let's go to the production version. So analytics.kudu.gr is a production version. By the way, um, you can come by our booth and then you can scroll down and click. Um, well, let me let me show you exactly uh, what you can do. Um, so. Uh, This all this is, uh, is the hopping uh, platform uh, eating all your RAM again? <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm just, it's really difficult to switch windows sometimes when. Don't uh, worry, uh, there's no uh, way. Anyway, you can just like yeah. you, can go, you can go to our booth and then uh, from the right, you can actually ask, you can get a subscription special for the TTC conference. Uh, we're going to give you like for one year access to our analytics platform so you can actually try it yourself. But if you scroll down, you can also get an invitation link to the CDOS network. So you can actually see real data and how they actually behave. Because if you get your own platform, you still need to fit the data into the system. But you can see the CDOS network so you can preview the data yourself. Just like scroll down to our booth, uh, move down from the video, and then you'll see a link that you can use to join our uh, CDOS network, CDOS community network. So let's go, for example, uh, let me show you how, how, easily, how easy it is to integrate it with your own uh, installation. So, we have three different ways. So let's go to like a test network we have here and then go to the integrations. Um, you, uh, so uh, as I told you, there are like three different ways to integrate. One, if you're using the classic approach of the Semtech packet forwarder, you can ask us to create a proxy for you in our premises. And that proxy is just a blind forwarding of whatever data you send us to your own server. So if you're using, for example, uh, the Things Network server, you can just like go ahead and add another proxy. So let's say the Semtech proxy. And I want to proxy our data to the to the Things Network proxy, like uh, uplink and downlink port. And you can click Save, and this will create a proxy in our servers that you can point your gateways directly in that proxy. And this is how you can send the data, like you can start receiving data through analytics. That's like the old school, the classic approach. But we now have full integration with the the, the Things Stack V3. So uh, if you have deployed your um, uh, TTI stack already, or if you switch to V3 already. You can very easily switch, uh, like enable the system to connect to your analytics platform and stream data from there. Uh, you can do this by um, going and creating an API key for us. Uh, the only information we need is to be able to read the gateway traffic. And uh, from this point onwards, you can just go ahead and um, uh, uh, receive the data directly from the server and then put it in our system ourselves. So you don't need to do anything else in this particular case. Um, there are also some other kind of integrations, like uh, we have an API uh, available, like a gRPC API. So you have the specifications on GitHub, so you can actually use the specifications to push analytics data yourself. Uh, and using this, this gateway, this, this system, you can run your proxy within your gateway or within your premises. So if you have already a SEMTEC compatible uh, forwarder, you can run our proxy in your premises and then tell it to forward the data in our analytics. That's another way of integrating with our platform. Uh, finally, though not very recommended, and, uh, but, but and, and of course is uh, quite useful for people who have private uh, installations, right? Exactly, that's for sure. Like, if uh, uh, just to clarify, in all these kind of cases, we never see application data, right? We don't care about application data, and we always operate on the encrypted payload. So we just check the MAC header, and nothing more in this particular data frame. So we also don't increase the amount of data we collect, so we don't add on uh, data to your stream, uh, but we just like check the analytics in the in the frame level. And um, so yeah, finally, we also have um, uh, the Things Network HTTP integration. It's not recommended, but you can use it to get started because uh, at this point where the integration is actually calling up, uh, calling back, it has already filtered all the situation that could go wrong. So we will never find out what has gone wrong. So it's preferred to use uh, the TTNV3 integration if you have it already. Uh, or a Semtech proxy, or running your gateway within your premises. Uh, and this uh, this type of integration is actually where your messages have already received, been uh, accepted by the Things Network, and also deduplicated by the Things Network. So you have way less callback, information right? yeah. in your uh, analytics platform. 
Exactly. So the V3 API actually has a really interesting events API that allows us to tap into the gateway traffic without um, without accessing any kind of application data, just seeing the application traffic. So uh, using that, we can feed the information down to the system. Uh, you still need, however, to go and configure the gateway characteristics, but we're working on getting this information directly from uh, TTC. It's not available right now, but we can make it happen. So you just need to go and position your gateway yourself and give us some information about your antenna, uh, like and your like uh, devices. Um, cool. Um, I think that wraps up our presentation. Yes, so uh, <laughs> I was about to tell you more or less the same because I think we are quite hijacking the, <laughs> the time of sessions. Um, yeah. Let's uh, just, uh, you know, move to the booth. We can have a small Q&A session there. Uh, we can be on the chat. Uh, if needed, and if there are interesting questions, you, we can al always take it, take this live, and we'll give you some time to, <laughs> to have a, not just such a sore throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Great. Was... So thank you very much, and meet you at the booth, everyone, uh, for more questions and information. Thank you, guys. Bye. Have a good day. Bye bye.